I'm here to talk with you a little bit about moments of pause, about how we experience pause during musical rest, while we sleep, and while we wait, for how it helps us understand the past, build a more thoughtful future, and become more of who we are as individuals and as humans. To do this, I'm going to look at three different examples from art and science, and I'll start with what are probably the four most famous notes in all of music. Everybody should have a chance to do that, to wave your arms and point a button and... It's the, op it's the opening of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and this is what it looks like. Three of the same notes in a row, followed by a fourth note, a little bit lower. It's a hard, knocking sound. Here it is one more time. But what's interesting about this is that if you look at the score, you'll see that Beethoven puts a rest just before the first note. Hearing that rest, experiencing that rest, changes the way that we experience the notes that follow from a series that begins with a knock to a series that begins with a moment of anticipation, of expectation, of intake. And he does this throughout. And if we attune ourselves to these moments of pause, it changes the way we experience the piece. Listen to the opening phrases as we move to the first climax. This moment is a threshold between past and future. Because at this moment, we hold in mind everything that has come so far, the melody that has carried us, and we anticipate a future, creating it, constructing it in our minds. In this moment of pause, our minds are wild with activity, processing the past and imagining what can be in the future. That a moment of pause could do this might not be too unfamiliar, for there's a clear analogy to be made with sleep. And so we'll leave Beethoven for a moment to look at the second example of the constructive nature of rest. Here's Shakespeare on sleep. Artists have written for centuries about how sleep is not only a period of necessary rest, but also a source of creative fuel. Sleep, they tell us, is a time when we process the past and nurture the future. And now scientists are beginning to affirm this. Sleep scientists have shown that after a period of activity, while the body is at rest, the brain is still quite active. During the first two hours of sleep, for example, we consolidate short-term memories in a region of the brain called the hippocampus collecting information from the day. In the four hours that follow, signals move between the hippocampus and the cortex, creating what we currently understand to be long-term memory. But this is when it gets really exciting. After roughly six hours, we enter the longest stretches of REM sleep, when the brain is crackling with activity, reliving thoughts and memories, mixing and remixing them, creating vivid images and dreams. Passing through these moments of sleep has been shown to have all kinds of salutary effects from deepening memories to enhancing problem solving. In one study, for example, people were given a math problem and then given an opportunity to sleep. Those who slept eight hours versus those who slept zero were more likely to find simple ways of solving the problem. Their brains were still working on the problem while they slept, churning through it. In this moment of rest, as during the rest during music, the brain processes the past and dreams up what can be. In dreams, we quite literally change who we will become, change how we behave in our future. I should add that uh, this is true for normal adult sleep. As Nala mentioned, I have a one-month-old, and our sleep looks a little bit more like this. <laughs> But who hasn't experienced these moments of rest, these moments of pause, when we remember things, when we, solve when we solve puzzles? We have our best ideas when we're in the shower, when we're warm, even a little groggy. We remember that piece of trivia when we stop trying to think about it, when we are relaxed. In these moments of rest, we take the time to process on our own terms. 
in our own ways. Every mind in this room is unique. It's not just a cliche. We all have our own experiences and thoughts and feelings and memories. And when we take in new information, we run that new information through that collected experience that we have. We process information in our own way. And so, in these moments of rest, we quite literally become more of who we are. Crucially, these moments of pause come at moments when we have removed stimulation or reduced stimulation. And from these moments of pause, we're able to more clearly define and move towards our goals. And I use this language here of stimulation and goals because the relationship between stimulation and goals lie at the heart of a model psychologists use for understanding attention. On the one hand is stimulus-driven attention. This is attention driven by our senses. This is the radar that's constantly running in the background, picking up sights and sounds. On the other hand is goal-oriented attention. This is attention that we direct. We sometimes think about this as focus. And our lives are a constant interplay between these two. The more we are driven by stimulation, the less we are driven by our goals. In order to move towards our goals, we often have to reduce or remove stimulation. Ideally, we strike a balance, we strike a balance between these two. In between them, though, are periods of rest, these moments of pause, for it's in these moments that we can synthesize what stimulates us, and from that, determine and define what our goals are, should be, and how we want to move towards them. Let's look at one more example of the constructive nature of pause, perhaps the most conclusive. Early in any teacher's career, a teacher learns about the concept of wait time. This is the time after a teacher poses a question and the time after a student responds. Before learning about wait time, most teachers wait less than one second after asking a question before posing a follow-up question or before calling on a student. But studies have repeatedly shown that increasing wait time to only three seconds changes the logic and language of student responses as well as attitudes of teachers and students alike in the classroom. With increased wait time, student responses are longer, are more evidence-based, they're more speculative, they ask more questions. With increased wait time, more students respond. And their confidence, as indicated by their inflection, also improves. Wait time changes results in classrooms from elementary school through university. And crucially, in these moments, as in moments of rest or sleep, as in moments of pause during music, a period of stimulus, in this case the question, followed by a period of pause, in this case the wait time, leads to a more thoughtful response. Stimulus, pause, response. Without the pause, we have only stimulus and response, or reflex. Without building pause into our lives, we live lives more on reflex and more on instinct, foregoing what may be a uniquely human trait, giving up our capacity for reflection, for wisdom. Unless we guard this downtime, we're at risk of losing it. How many of us, first thing in the morning, reach for our cell phones on our bedside table? In that moment, when we are groggy and seeking stimulation, our brains are still active, processing information, filtering. How many of us, when we are at work, are interrupted by a text message or by email? For how many of us is the shower the last refuge of clear thinking? <laughs> I'm an educator, and here where we are, we are giving up those moments of time in the margins to increase stimulation. And for students, any observer of student culture, or of childhood more broadly, may have observed that going to one's room is no longer going to a place of quiet and lonely reflection. In short, the periods in our day given to stimulation are increasing, and the moment that we have left for reflection is decreasing. Moments of pause in music, during prolonged sleep, wait time after questions, these are moments when we can process the past and imagine a future, a future that depends more on critical thought and more on imagination than on instinct. These moments foster creative insight, analytical acuity, and vision. In these moments, 
We process information unimpeded on our own terms. In these moments, we become more of who we are, enabling ourselves to bring our most thoughtful self to the future that we are all building together. Thank you.